What is up guys? So today on the table we have a build sent over by my buddy Random Rob. This build is for his barber and so I've dubbed this the barbershop build. Rob picked out some really cool parts for this one. He picked out these scissor hands over here. I think these things are going to look awesome when they're installed. He also paired that with a white dial, a blue chapter ring, and a blue seconds hand. You know, giving it that red, white, and blue, similar to a barbershop sign, and tying into that barbershop theme, and just bringing it all together. So, I think he did a really good job pairing all these parts, and I'm excited to see how this one turns out. So, let's go ahead and get started with the build. So, starting with the dial here, you'll notice when we turn it over that it's got dial feet for both the 3 o'clock crown position and 4 o'clock crown. So the case we're using has a 3 o'clock crown, so we're going to go ahead and remove these 4 o'clock dial feet. So to do that, I just use a pair of cutters, and we're just going to go ahead and get as close as we can to the dial, and then we're going to go ahead and cut that off just like that. Then we'll go ahead and turn our dial over and get ready to cut the next one. Just similar to the first, we'll get close as we can, and then just cut that off just like that. You will be uh, left with a uh, little bit of dial foot protruding, so we'll go ahead and file that down here, just so everything is nice and flush when we install our dial onto our movement. So this does not take very long. Dials are always made out of pretty soft material, uh, usually some kind of brass and copper. So um, we'll go ahead and file these down. This is not sped up or anything like that. This is real time. So it does not take very long to remove that tiny bit of material. Like I said, it's pretty soft. So we'll just go ahead and file that until it's completely smooth, just like this. And um, make sure that everything is nice and flush. So once I'm happy with that, we'll go ahead and take a closer look here. And uh, you can definitely see from the side profile there that uh, the dial is completely smooth. And we've removed all that extra material. So before we install this onto our movement, we are going to give it a clean with some Rotico just to make sure there's not any little leftover particles or anything like that that can get into our movement or anything. So now we can go ahead and grab our movement. This is an NH35. So we'll go ahead and get that installed into our movement holder, just like that. And then we can go ahead and install our dial here. So here's a dial installed. I think this dial looks great. It's a no-nonsense uh, tool-style dial. I think it just looks really clean and uh, really legible. And uh, here from the side profile, you can see what I was talking about. You can see how our dial is sitting flush against the movement. So that means we did a good job removing those dial feet. So now we can go ahead and install our hour hand. I like to use some Rotico to hold the hour hand and get it in position. And then just give it a press with our Bergeon hand setting tool. Before I install it all the way, I like to check the alignment. Make sure that I'm happy with the alignment. And then we'll go ahead and give it another firm press, making sure that it's you know, being seated all the way. I also like to uh, turn the movement as well and press kind of going all the way around, making sure that the uh, hour hand is set correctly. So now we'll go ahead and give it a check from the side here and make sure that the hour hand is on straight and that it's seated correctly. I also like checking around the pinion there, making sure that the hand is not crooked in any way, and also kind of from a straight on view as well, just to make sure it's not crooked from side to side. Once I'm happy with that, we can go ahead and um, turn it to the six o'clock position here um, and get ready to install our minute hand. So, I always like to set the hour hand to six o'clock just because it makes aligning the hands much easier, um, I find anyway. So we'll go ahead and grab our minute hand here 
And again, same process. I like to use some Rodico to get it aligned and over the pinion. And then we'll just give it a light press. And then we'll check our alignment before we go ahead and give it another press here, making sure it's seated. So, and similar to the hour hand as well, I like to turn the movement and then press. And then we'll turn again and give it another press here, making sure that it's going on um, evenly and that it's not crooked from side to side or anything. So we'll go ahead and give it a check here. So always like to check from the side profile and make sure that our spacing is even between the hands and also that both hands are on straight and on. Uh, all correctly so again i like checking around the pinion there just to make sure that it's evenly seated all the way around that and then again from that side profile just to make sure that everything is on straight and that our spacing is set correctly so now that i'm happy with that we can go ahead and check our hand alignment here so oh man those scissor hands are just too freaking cool that's so awesome it looks like I'm cutting hair over here. That's pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and check from 9 o'clock here. Make sure that our alignment is good. We'll go ahead and check at the 12 o'clock position as well. Make sure we're perfectly aligned. That looks awesome as well. Looks like our hands are closed there at the 12. Pretty cool. Man, <laughs> I just these scissor hands are too cool. That's too freaking awesome. So we'll go ahead and check at our three o'clock position as well. Make sure everything is aligned properly and it's looking good. We'll go ahead and get ready to check out our six o'clock position. And I missed it <laughs> playing around with those scissor hands. Don't play with scissors. Um, so we'll go back around real quick and we'll check at 12 o'clock. Make sure that is looking good. I like how those hands are actually um, partially skeletonized at the top, too. It's pretty cool. So now we can go ahead and check at our 6 o'clock. There we go. So got it that time, and I'm happy with the alignment there at 6. Everything looks straight to me. So, man, those scissor hands, that's so freaking cool. So now we can go ahead and install our second hand here. Very similar, I like to hold it with some Rodico, get it set right over the pinion. Second hand is a really tiny one. I usually hold my breath for this. Boom, got it that one. And, um, you know, just take your time with that, you know. And I always like to check from the side profile as well to make sure our spacing is set correctly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check that we don't have any kind of interference by rotating the hands around. So that goes smooth. And then I go ahead and click the crown in, make sure that the minute hand, I mean the second hand can run under its own power over the minute hand. Make sure that it's not coming into kind of any interference or anything like that. And um, just make sure from that side profile again that we have plenty of clearance. So, I'm happy with the spacing and the hand alignment, so we can go ahead and set our movement assembly off to the side. We'll put that under a dust cover. It's just a cup from my kitchen cabinet, nothing too fancy. So um, we'll go ahead and grab our case here. This is a case from Namoki's, and it's a Nautilus case. I really like that deep grain brushing on that bezel, and it looks so good. So really like this case as well. So really happy with that. So we'll go ahead and install our chapter ring here. And uh, you can see that little notch right there up at the 12. That little notch will go into a groove cut into the case. So we'll go ahead and install our chapter ring here. Make sure that's fully seated down. And it's all the way in place there. And then we'll go ahead and check and make sure our little notch is inside of our little groove and that we're lined up at the 12. 
so that is good to go now we can go ahead and grab our crystal here so I'm always careful when I remove the crystal from the packaging just to be sure that there's no dust that gets under it to go right from the packaging right onto the case just to minimize any kind of dust exposure so we'll get that set onto our case here We'll make sure from the side profile that it's uh, sitting evenly all the way around and uh, that it's, you know, not crooked or anything. So for this crystal, I am using a 30 millimeter die, slightly different from uh, some of the other SKX crystals that I use. So just wanted to note that I made a, used a 30 millimeter die for this one. So we'll go ahead and get it set onto our crystal press here. And we'll go ahead and get this uh, lined up and set up real quick. So before we press, we want to make sure that it's, you know, on the crystal evenly all the way around. And when we're happy with that, we can go ahead and give it a little press here. Not too much, though, because we want to turn the case as we install it, making sure that it's going on evenly. So we'll go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees and then go ahead and give it another press here. Just like that. And uh, this crystal goes in pretty easily. Um, you don't have to, you know, struggle with it too much. It kind of kind of falls right into place. So we'll take a check at that and look at it. And I think it's looking great here. There's a little tiny chamfer on that crystal, just providing a little bit of light play. Um, pretty nice uh, touch there as well. So now before we install our movement or anything like that, I want to check the water resistance. So we'll go ahead and assemble the case back and crown, and then we'll go ahead and put this in the sink here. I like to uh, agitate the water uh, and spray it around just kind of simulating some movement there and then uh, we'll go ahead and take a look here and make sure that we don't have any leaks so obviously we want to test with the movement out that way if there was a leak we don't damage our movement or our dial or anything and I'm happy with that so now we can go ahead and grab our movement here we'll go ahead and pop that out of our movement holder real quick and then we'll go ahead and uh, flip it over here and reinstall it onto our movement holder just like that now we can go ahead and remove our crown here just by pushing that little lever crown will pop right out just like that now we can go ahead and turn our uh, movement back over and remove it from our movement holder just like that and uh, before we install it into the case uh, we're all gonna give it a clean with some air here so we'll go ahead and make sure everything is nice and clean before we give a final install so we'll go ahead and give a thorough clean there and then get ready to grab our case this is always my favorite part. Get that lined up right like that and get it installed into the case. That looks so cool. So let's give it a once over here. Just check everything. Man, I think this thing came out great. It's looking so good already, but uh, we're not done quite yet. We'll go ahead and remove the crown here and we'll get ready to uh, cut our stem here. So we'll go ahead and install our crown onto our stem. Make sure that it's threaded all the way down here as tight as we can get it. Then we'll go ahead and install that into our case here. Go ahead and make sure that it is all the way engaged and that it can wind the movement. We want to make sure it's all the way engaged to the winding position. That way, when we measure our crown, we don't get an inaccurate reading or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and measure from our case to our crown here. Get our measurement. Just make sure that we have a 
good measurement with that and then we can go ahead and remove our crown same way we did the first time just press that little lever the crown will come right out so now we'll remove our crown from our stem here just like that and we'll get ready to measure our crown stem here so i like to mark it with a marker just like this just mark it right at the edge of our calipers there and the good thing about using a marker like this is that it'll give you an upper limit and a lower limit so naturally we'll try at the upper limit first and if we need to remove more we can always do that but we want to be on the safe side and cut at the upper limit first because you can't add any more crown but you can always cut some so we'll go ahead and cut at the top of our mark here with our cutters so we'll go ahead and uh, get ready to cut that just like that make sure we're nice and even as well as even as we can be give that a cut you will notice that there is a pretty nasty little burr left over on that stem though so to take care of that we're going to go ahead and grab a file and our tweezers so i like to grab tweezers and hold by the threads you don't want to grab the crown by uh, any part that engages with the keyless works so grab down by the threads and uh, grab your file and again this doesn't take too long this is done in real time here i didn't speed the video up or anything like that so it does not take too much time so you can see already we removed a good part of that burr but it is so kind of um mushroomed towards the top of that there taking a closer look you can still see that there's a bit of a burr left so we'll go ahead and get ready to file some more here so this time i'm going to file around the sides of it uh, where the burr is the most uh, prominent so we'll go ahead and kind of go from a couple angles here just going around uh, the crown making sure that uh, the burr is taken care of all the way there you can see a better look at it pretty happy with that so we'll go ahead and get ready to install our crown onto the stem here so you can see our burr is completely gone here and we should be able to install our crown onto the stem with no issues at all it should just thread right on if it fights you any you know you can always file more uh, but they are tiny little threads so you don't want to damage them or anything like that so we'll go ahead and get that threaded on nice and tight and then we can go ahead and check and see um, if we need to remove any more or anything like that go ahead and get that installed make sure that it can wind and that it threads all the way down and uh, that feels pretty good so we'll go ahead and unthread the crown now oh beautiful nice pop winds and then we'll thread it back down i think we got it right the first time that's always great yep beautiful pop on that crown really happy with the crown action so now we can go ahead and add some silicone grease to our crown gaskets here we just want to do a thin little coating uh, not too much so I'll go ahead and remove any excess grease there. This grease will just prolong the life of the rubber gasket. And it'll also make uh, crown operation a little more smooth um, and frictionless. So, uh, and that again will help, you know, protect those gaskets from wearing. So we'll go ahead and get that installed into our movement here. Make sure it's winding and thread it all the way down here really happy with the crown so now we can go ahead and install our case back gasket here and again we're just going to apply a thin little layer of silicone grease on this gasket here it will prolong the life of the rubber and um, it'll also hold the case back uh, gasket in place when we go ahead and thread our our case back down and it'll also uh, Make sure there's less friction when we're actually screwing our case back down so the gasket doesn't um, tear or anything like that so with the case back gasket in place here we'll go ahead and grab our case back get ready to install it 
So go ahead and get that into place. And then we'll just go ahead and thread it down. So this is a slim case back as well from the Mokis. So this is going to be a nice thin build as well. Let's go ahead and flip it over and take a look. I'm really happy with how this thing came out. I think it looks great. I really love that deep grain brushing on the Nautilus case here. I think the Mokis did a really good job with that. Let's go ahead and check our crown action one more time. Beautiful pop. Really happy with that. Crown winds. We'll go ahead and check our uh, time setting function. So we'll pull the crown all the way out here. Make sure we can set our time. I'll never get over how cool those scissor hands are. So we will check at uh, 9 o'clock one more time. And then we'll check at 12 o'clock as well. Make sure everything is lining up. Looks really cool. Set our scissor hands to where they're about to cut. Then we'll go ahead and thread our crown back down. Threads in nice and smooth. So, like I said, I'm really happy with uh, how this build came out. I think it looks great. So, this Nautilus case from the Mokis is pretty cool. Like I mentioned, it is a very thin build as well. So, I didn't take a measurement on it, but I, I, if I had to guess, it's under 12 millimeters thick. So, this thing's going to wear a treat on the wrist, um, be really comfortable as well. So really happy with how this one came out. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next one.